it's Rebecca here from Precious Pages Papercraft and today I'm designing a layout for Bramble Fox and I'm using some of the new Halloween goodies that have uh, recently hit the store um, and I'm working today with the Spooktacular Borders set um, and I absolutely love these. They are black acrylic uh, but they're glittery so they're really shimmery, got like a really really fine like powdery glitter in them. Um, really gorgeous and you get the two borders and then you get a couple of ravens or crows I'm not sure um, not very good on my bird knowledge um, but they're just gorgeous so I wanted to use all four pieces on this layout as soon as I saw this set I knew exactly kind of what I wanted to do with it kind of an idea formulated in my head straight away um, and I decided I wanted to have um, a layout that featured both of the long borders um, one at the top right there and one on the bottom left with loads of mixed media up behind it. Um, so I've pulled out loads of different um, purple sort of inks and paints and things from my stash. Um, and I've started off with a mermaid marker by Jane Davenport, like a watercolour pen. Um, and I watered that down slightly and added that. And then I've gone over the top of that with a distress ink in Dusty Concord, just using the packaging technique. And I'm trying to lighten that area up a bit. I'm really conscious that if my mixed media is too dark, you're not going to see those gorgeous perspectives. So I add some uh, silver spray there. That's a distress stain spray, I think it is, um, in brushed pewter. And it's a lovely metallic silver. And where the purple was still a little bit wet on the page, it's kind of merged with the purple ink and almost given me this kind of purpley silver marbled effect with the ink, which is really pretty. Um, completely unintentional, um, but I really like how it looks. Um, but it still didn't lighten that area as much as I was hoping. So um, I've just dried all those inks off and I wanted to bring in some tissue paper and I've got this almost, almost lilac colour. And I thought I would stick that in place um, and stitch through it. But once I'd got it down, um, you can see the perspective better on it, but I just really didn't like it. Didn't think it looked right at all. Um, just generally wasn't happy with it. So that is not gonna stay on my layout at all. <laughs> um, that is going to come off in a minute and be replaced with some patterned paper. But I've left it there for now. It's stuck down with some double-sided tape. Um, and now I'm going to get to work on the kind of bottom left area. Um, and this is where I decided to bring in some patterned papers. So I've got some, um, I've got loads of Halloween papers from various collections. I love scrapping Halloween. Um, so I had uh, quite a few papers to choose from, thankfully. So I've pulled out a purple one here. And it's um, a lighter purple with darker purple stars. And I've just kind of torn an area. I wanted this page to have loads of texture to it. So um, I think I said at the beginning, I'm going to do loads of stitching, some mixed media. I'm going to bring in a few fabric materials as well. Um, I just wanted loads and loads of mixed media and texture. I just generally wanted to have a play. Um, so like I said at the beginning, I had this plan to have these two areas with the mixed media and the stitching. But other than that, I kind of wasn't sure how I was going to build up those two areas, if that makes sense. Um, so I pulled out. All my black and purple kind of everything all my materials all my inks um threads everything and it was all on my desk you <laughs> luckily you can't see it because um it's quite a big pile um and i'm just going through things and i'm just going to keep adding things to this layout so i've brought in another patterned paper there again with stars on it and this is where i decide to get rid of that tissue paper up the top and replace that with patterned paper and I'm tearing all these edges. I don't want anything cut straight or anything. I want that texture. Um, so all the pattern papers are getting torn, um, some with the white edge showing, some without, and I'm layering them up. Um, and I'm still very conscious that you can't see the perspectives on top of this. Um, so in a minute, I'm gonna bring in a bit more silver, trying to kind of lighten the page up. Um, but I took a break, I think I had to go and get my little boy from school and I came back to the layout the next day um, and just decided to keep adding more, <laughs> as you do. So I've got this kind of fabric netting here, it's silver and metallic, it's really shiny and I absolutely love this stuff. If you want to look for it, the 
best place I've found is the uh, famous online auction site. Um, and if you search for uh, Deco Web Ribbon, you'll probably get it come up. I think it's what florists use when wrapping bouquets. I actually got all of mine from a shop on the Isle of Wight where my parents live. Um, and it was in the floristry section, so that's what makes me think it's um, used in floristry. But I've got it in loads of different colours, and it's great for bringing a bit of texture to the page. So I've added some of that top and bottom there of those clusters. And then that black star paper, the underside was kind of like, um, almost like a stone colour, just not quite grey, but not quite white. Um, and I thought I'd add a little bit of a torn strip of that as well, trying to lighten the area behind where that perspective is going to sit. So I've stuck that down with double-sided tape. I'm also bringing in some sequin waste here. I've got this in quite a few colours as well. Um, I'm just cutting that so that it's not a straight edge. And I'm just adding a little bit here and there into those layers. And as you can see, I'm just building these layers up with various different um, materials and textures. And then I wanted to try and lighten it up a bit more. <laughs> it's all about trying to lighten these areas at the moment. Um, so I've got some silver glittered card and I thought that works well because the um, perspectives themselves have that fine glitter in. So I've bought some glitter card in and getting that stuck in place. And you can really see that perspective showing up more on the bottom of the page there um, with that glitter behind it. And then the top section, I'm just going to tuck it in behind the sort of the layers because I've already got that lighter coloured paper in place. So I really like how this is looking and how it's coming together at the moment, but I want to add more in the way of mixed media and I want to get loads of different techniques and um, sort of different materials and things on this page. So I'm coming in now with a stencil and an embossing pen and I'm just kind of colouring in uh, part of the stencil pattern there onto my background and I'm going to add some bonding powder on top of this. This stuff's like embossing powder um, but slightly different so once it gets hot it's kind of tacky and sticky and then I'm going to stick some of this gorgeous metallic foil to it. Um, so you just use that embossing pen or if you've got an embossing ink pad or anything like that the, you heat it up, I'm using my heat gun for that, getting it really hot and sticking that foil straight on it. It does get very hot for your fingers. Um, so if you do want to give this a go, be very careful, um, it does burn. <laughs> um, and then once that foil's in place, I'm going over it with a pencil eraser just to make sure it definitely transfers. Sometimes I've found with this, it can be a bit patchy, which is great and it wouldn't have mattered on this layout because um, nothing is kind of neat, if that makes sense. Um, you've got the messy mixed media, you've got the torn edges. So had the foiling have not been perfect, I really wouldn't have been bothered. But I did want to get that um, the pattern and that shine on. So I'll just go over it with that pencil eraser to make sure um, it takes hold. And I'm going to do that in a few areas. I'm going to skip through most of it because I do end up spending quite a bit of time. I think I do four areas in total. Um, but you can just see it there in the light there. It's just added a lovely shine to the page. And then I took a little bit of break off the camera um, and I did a lot of machine stitching. And when I say a lot of machine stitching, I really do mean a lot. Um, I went to town on this. So I did loads of straight stitch and zigzag stitch. And normally I would sort of push my threads back to the back of my layout and then tie them off and tape them down neatly. But on this one, because I wanted all that texture, I've literally just cut the threads. So you've got loads of kind of little bits of thread loose on the page there and that just brings in loads more texture and i wanted messy stitching so it's it's not neat and you'll see in the close-ups um it's just i've just gone to town with it basically and had a bit of fun and then i'm gonna get my perspective stuck in place now before i go on with anything else now i always use glossy accents for my perspectives and they always hold um i've never had a perspective come off or not stick until today um that bottom border there you can see on the bottom left where i've tried to stick it to this glittered card it just did not want to take so um you can see every now and then it's moving and it just really didn't stick it was as if there was no adhesive on the back at all um, so usually glossy accents is my go-to for perspectives but on this occasion it did not want to stick to the glittered card so i do end up adding some double-sided sticky tape behind it um, as well, just to make sure it holds. 
And I'm just bringing in those two patterned papers that I've used again. I'm adding some layers behind my photo. And again, I'm tearing those papers because I want that texture, that distressed look. Um, I always think distressed look goes really well with Halloween layouts. Um, I don't think I ever make a really like clean, crisp Halloween layout. There's always loads of texture and distressing going on. And then I'm going to raise that photo up on foam. So I've just added some foam to the top part of the photo. I've left the bottom because I'm going to try and tuck that in under that patterned paper there. And then I'm going back to my mixed media again. Um, I'm coming in with a stamp here. Yeah, it's just kind of like a texture stamp and I'm using black stays on ink and I'm just again going to town having fun <laughs> trying again to get that perspective to stick to that glittered card um, but I'm just having fun with this stamping and roughly stamping um, repeatedly all over the layout and I decide that my background is looking really nice and messy with this mixed media and my photo was looking really clean and it was really bugging me um, so I decided to take that stamp to the edge of my photo as well and distress that so it kind of it settles into the background more and doesn't kind of stick out so much um, being really clean and crisp. So I do that with the black ink and then I do the same thing with um, a purple distress ink. This is Dusty Concord again. So I'm just going over stamping all the areas and I'm doing those stitched areas on the edges as well. And I'm just trying to extend the the mixed media, the interest, just wanted to bring this whole page together. And then I want to get my little um, ravens or crows stuck down. So I'm adding one to each of those borders. I've got one sitting um, on that tree there and one sitting on one of the stars at the top. And I don't want to embellish this layout too heavily. I want the mixed media and those perspectives to kind of really be the star of the show. So I'm just gonna add a few little bits. I've got some bats here. I'm gonna fussy cut a few of them. Um, I'm skipping through that because uh, you don't need to see me fussy cutting. So I cut out four of those and I'm gonna stick those down with foam pads uh, to bring in a bit of dimension to the page. I think I end up sticking these down and then moving a couple in a minute. Um, it's the beauty of these foam pads is that they you can move things around once you've stuck them down. Um, I'm just having a bit of a play here, scattering them around. Um, and it was at this point when I'd stuck those down that I realised I hadn't actually left sort of an obvious place for a title. Um, so although I've stuck those bats down, I already know in my head that some of them are going to end up being moved. And I'm now just pulling out some sticker sheets and chipboard stickers and things that I've got from various Halloween collections, um, looking for things that are kind of black and purple. And I find this scalloped border on, um, this is Simple Stories Boo Crew, it's their Halloween collection from last year. Um, and it was perfect, it's black with spider's webs on it. Um, and I've just torn a couple of sections to add underneath my clusters. And I'm going to pull off three stickers here, all black and white. Um, I'm just sticking them to cardstock to make them a bit more rigid and so that I can kind of play with them and move them around and, until I'm happy with their position. Um, so it just takes me a little bit of time to cut these out again and then I will get those stuck in place with some foam pads. So now I'm going to get my title added in. Um, pulled out a few different bits here because I wasn't sure what I wanted to use. In the end, I go for these gorgeous stickers here. These are the um, Pebbles Spooky Collection from last year. I've managed to hoard these for an entire year. Um, I really love them, um, but they need to be used. I can't keep them forever. So um, I'm breaking into them and using my first one on this layout. And I've chosen Spooky because my photo is of my little boy in his Halloween top. Um, with his witch's hat on last Halloween. And I just had to move a couple of those bats just to make room for that. And I've got it stuck in under that top cluster there. And now I'm just gonna finish the layout off with loads of splatters. So I'm using various um, products, various shades of purple. Also gonna add some black splatters. Um, I think I do some silver as well, just to kind of tie it all together. Um, but I really enjoyed making this layout. Sometimes I'm just really in the mood to just get messy um, and just play with mixed media. Um, I really love mixed media. You can have so much fun with it. 
and you know if it turns out you don't like it you can just put it in the bin it's only cardstock at the end of the day um, but I really really loved this and I knew how I wanted to use these perspectives and then um, sort of that idea just grew into this whole mixed media page um, and I really love it and you'll see in the close-ups in a minute how much detail and texture it's given this page I'm just finishing off with those last few splatters then and I will um, add a load of close-ups at the end for you. So thank you very much for joining me today. I know it's um, a longer video than normal for me, um, but I didn't want to cut out any of that mixed media process. I wanted you to, to sort of see all the steps I'd taken. Um, so thanks for sticking with me. I'll leave some links in the description box below to um, the products in the store, also to the Foxbox subscription page in case you'd like to sign up or read more about our monthly subscribers box. Um, and I'll also leave a link to the Bramble Fox Friends Facebook group if you'd like to head over and join if you're not already a member. Um, but thanks again. I'll leave you with the rest of the close-ups and I shall see you next time.